Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Game time had 35 yep. in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard's, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, we I were. admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth, and Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would say a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucks would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a posipedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, don't think. Be ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on... And welcome in game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. A very happy Wednesday to you now. Here we are, April the 24th, which can mean only one thing. That's right. The NFL, the draft is right around the corner. No, seriously, it is right around the corner. 24 hours from now, uh, we will have hope as a New York Jet fan base to see maybe, just maybe, they don't screw this up here, but I know a lot of fan bases are on the edge of their seat as the king of all kings, the NFL, will take center stage 24 hours from now, and we have got you coming up. Coming up this hour, in fact, we'll talk to our good friend Brady Cannon, and we'll get his thoughts on what can be expected in what is supposed to be an extremely quarterback-heavy draft, and could franchises restart with the right pick here. So a lot to break down when it comes down to the NFL draft. We'll have you covered here on this edition of Game Time Decisions. But let us not forget, we still have NBA playoffs uh, to get to here tonight. In fact, uh, a little less than an hour from now, the Miami Heat will try to even things up against the Boston Celtics at the TD Garden in Boston. Uh, did not work out all that well in game one for Miami, but... Well, it looks like the markets don't think it's going to work out all that well in game two either. 14 and a half points we're seeing, which if there is any light at the end of the tunnel, this was 15 when it opened. So it looks like some people are betting the Miami Heat here, though, at 14, 14 and a half. Ironically enough, the total is the thing that has been moving the most in that game. Uh, we saw this at 203. Uh, as an open, and it started to creep back up, got as high as 207, and now we're starting to see this come back down here a little. So that game uh, is going to be the kickoff of the NBA slate here tonight, and that'll be followed up, of course, by game two between the New Orleans Pelicans and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Another 1-7 uh, situation going on with Oklahoma City uh, squeaking by in game one against New Orleans in a game in which New Orleans pretty much dominated the rebounding in the game, which gave them the opportunity to steal one in that game one. Unfortunately, they weren't able to make any shots down the stretch, and OKC got away with one there. We're going to see 
if OKC can uh, make any adjustments here tonight because they're laying exactly the same number that they were laying in game one. In fact, seven and a half is what we had for game one, and it got an awful lot of steam throughout the day, pushed that thing all the way up to nine, nine and a half uh, just before tip-off. And obviously, the New Orleans Pelicans were the only team to be able to cover in those game ones there. OKC, another home team, got it done in game one. Will they get it done in game two? A lot still to be decided here tonight in the association. And speaking of playoffs, the NHL, they've got some playoffs coming up here tonight. Also, as some teams try to get it back to even, and we're going to start with the early game here tonight. How about it? You got yourselves the Bruins who uh, unfortunately weren't able to get both at home. We got a series knotted up at one apiece. Toronto will host them here and still right around the same price, right? Still right around a pick em price between these two teams. Uh, and we're going to see if anything changes here. Can Toronto hold serve on their ice tonight in an all-important game three? That should be a fun one. And how about Dallas taking on? Uh, Las Vegas, who welcomed back Mark Stone, among others, in that first game. And, well, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, Vegas just seems to know how to beat the Dallas Stars. They have done it for quite a while now, and they are doing it again as the defending Stanley Cup champs uh, will once again be on the road taking on Dallas. And we're going to see whether or not Dallas can muster up and uh, and get one done. Now, this is one of those all-important situations where teams don't want to go down 2-0. Uh, we just saw Toronto in, uh, in Game 2 on the road against uh, the Boston Bruins. They knew what they had to do, and I think Dallas realizes what they can't have happen here, and what they can't have happen is hopping on a plane and going to Vegas down two games to none. You can say the exact same thing for the late night game here tonight, which will feature the L.A. Kings taking on the Edmonton Oilers here. Another one of those all important games in which you can't go down 2-0 and expect to be able to come back into this thing, even if you are the L.A. Kings. But a 7-4 game one victory made over betters extremely happy in that first one. And the Oilers, well, they just look like the better team, don't they, across the board? Uh, we have seen this edition of the Edmonton Oilers before. You can blink, and before you know it, it's 4 nothing Edmonton. And that's exactly what the Kings have to try to avoid. But again, I can't imagine trying to sweat out an under with the likes of uh, Connor McDavid on the ice there and Leon Dreisaitl uh, and uh, Henrique. I, ju I just can't imagine going, you know what? I think this is going to be a 2-1 game. I don't think so. But Joe Madden, she's going to drop by here a little bit later this hour. We'll get her thoughts on the slate of the NHL games and got plenty of Major League Baseball. In fact, two games already underway right now. One in the bottom of the eighth with the New York Mets finally look like they might win a game in front of the San Francisco Giants 6-1 here. Uh, the, the Met Bats have uh, come alive finally uh, after a rough one against Logan Webb last night. 6-1, bottom of the eighth there, and same situation for the Baltimore Orioles. They, too, had a uh, rough go of it there uh, yesterday and lost one to the L.A. Angels, but it looks like they're going to get one back here. They're handling their business 6-3 now, top of the seventh, as the O's are on top. Coming up, bottom of this hour, Boston taking on Cleveland in what is going to be, again, not a great weather evening. And anybody that watched that game last night, I can't even believe that the Guardians and the Red Sox were allowed to play in that game last night as the weather was not favorable in any way, shape, or form. And it's not going to be great here tonight either. That's why we're starting to see a total. Well, seven and a half is what you are seeing now. It was eight and a half last night, and they didn't come close to sniffing that. Now we're starting to see some under money come in. But we got the Guardians as a slight 
favorite in that game. And the Guardians been red hot handling their business as of late. And I'll admit it, I didn't expect to see the Red Sox uh, be this good at this particular part of the season. I have a underwind win season ticket on them. And while well, the good news for me is there's plenty of baseball. And uh, seeing how they continue to put pitchers on the IL here, I do think that's still a pretty good bet. We also have the Brewers trying to handle business against the Pirates here tonight as a slight favorite. That game coming up 640 Eastern time. We've got bullpen. That's right. Bullpen days for both teams there. Wilson against Fleming in that one. Can the Brewers get back to scoring runs? It's been a rough go here the last couple of games. This was one of the uh, one of the best hitting teams we had seen so far in Major League Baseball, but they've kind of hit the skids here. They'll have an opportunity to get on track here in just about 20 minutes. You also have the Phillies and the Reds here in a rubber match. What a pitching matchup this is going to be. Turnbull versus Lodolo. This should be a fun one to watch here. No Bryce Harper uh, for the Phillies here tonight on maternity leave, so they are going to be missing his bat, but we'll see whether or not that makes a difference plenty more major league baseball coming your way but like we said the nfl front and center the draft is tomorrow we've got plenty on that come back and join us here game time decisions on the grid Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Game time had 35 yep. in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard's, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, we I were. admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would see a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second-best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. And that's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucks would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a posturepedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. He ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri. Appreciate you stopping by. We got plenty going on here tonight of course nba playoffs nhl playoffs major league baseball but let's not forget uh the king of the heap is the nfl and they are going to be front and center 24 hours from now as the nfl draft will take center stage not just uh in the nfl but of course here on the sports grid network and joining us here to try to make heads or tails like what i did there brady cannon uh as to what we're gonna get uh, is one Brady Cannon there. Always a pleasure, uh, Brady, as it's kind of hard to believe, but 
we're all wrapped up in playoffs, PGA season, baseball, and then just like that, the NFL draft is here. And I was just saying, I don't remember a draft in which this many quarterbacks have been thrown around and discussed. And it all starts, I guess, with Caleb Williams. Everyone's just assuming he's the number one pick here, which is great. But there's a few other quarterbacks on this board. This is a huge quarterback heavy draft, isn't it? It really is. And I think, you know, the number two pick is still very much up in the air. Jaden Daniels has become a pretty darn big favorite uh, to go number two to the, to the commanders. But you have to remember their quarterback coach, uh, McCown, you know, coached uh, Drake May in high school. I don't know if that means anything. It probably means a little something. Uh, I, I personally think it will be Daniels. I think probably overall he's the better athlete. And if you're kind of stuck, you know, I, I think you maybe just take the more athletic player. It seems that's where the quarterback position has gone in the last five, six, seven years, it really ever since the resurgence of uh, Patrick Mahomes, you know, to the top of the world at that position, you got to have the mobility. We know Jaden Daniels has that. And then the Patriots are really interesting. You know, are they going to take the leftover there? Are they going to take Daniels or, or Drake May if they're still around? Are they going to go back to the old Bill Belichick style of trading down and accumulating draft capital? That didn't work so well for him the last Mm -hmm. handful of years, the end of uh, Belichick's uh, tenure there in New England. I I would think the new regime, I I mean, some people think Marvin Harrison Jr. will go number three to the Patriots, who's Mm -hmm. probably the best player available from from the get-go. I kind of have to believe, I mean, are you really going to skip on – a pretty darn good prospect in Daniels or May, or maybe some people think J.J. McCarthy, uh, Mm -hmm. and and take a receiver when, meanwhile, back at camp, you have Bailey Zappi. I I think they have to go with a quarterback. I I would say Harrison probably goes number four to the Cardinals. I think the Chargers, I actually have a bet, Joe, on the number five pick will be Joe Alt the outstanding offensive tackle for Notre Dame. Mm. I think the Chargers are going to take him at five. Now, obviously, Minnesota, you expect, is going to get involved and somehow try and trade up to get a quarterback. I kind of feel they'll probably end up with J.J. McCarthy. I just don't know where it's going to be. So we'll have to see how that plays out. And that could certainly interrupt my uh, Joe Alt going number five. Yeah, I'd, I'd tell you this, Brady. Uh, the, one of the things that I love about the NFL draft is the unbelievable lying through the teeth uh, <laughs> and the leaks that come from organizations to everyone pivoting left and goes right. And, and you truly never, ever believe anything that you are hearing when it comes to, oh, this team loves this guy, this team. It's all misdirection, and nobody does it better Uh, than the NFL here. But we just watched a season in which Joe Flacco was on a couch and comes, has to get called because we don't have enough quarterbacks, right? We watched the Jets not have a quarterback in their entire season. I mean, go down the list of the backups and the guys that had to play this year. You almost, if you need a quarterback in this kind of draft, it feels like teams are going to unload to go get one what what other choice do you have here brady you don't have much and and you know what the point you're alluding to there is how long is that guy going to stick around anyway i mean i think there was some 70 different starters or more in the league last year i mean that that's really you know i've often said the best job in the world is to be about the 110th best golfer in the world you retain (laughs) your pga card every year you make a million bucks and nobody knows who you are maybe the second best job is backup quarterback in the nfl you know because nobody knows who you are you're going to start about six games you collect a nice check and you go home (laughs) but yeah it's obviously it's always been the most important position but it just seems that's so heightened these days with the rule changes the way they protect quarterbacks the way they protect receivers they protect just about everything on offense and i think that makes the position even more that that more important Yeah, and you can only get them in one way. So, all right, you've got some bets here coming up. Let's throw them up on the screen, Brady. Run through these bets for the draft for us. Tell us what you're thinking. 
Yeah, I mentioned Joe Alt going number five overall. I got that at four to one. I've seen even higher, as high as plus 475. I don't know if anything that high is still around, but you know, I also think you could make a bet on him to go under seven and a half. I think he's definitely going to be taken in the first seven picks. I'm hoping it's number five to the Chargers. Uh, I also took Brock Bowers, the kid from Napa, California, tight end for Georgia. Got him at under, ten, or excuse me, over 10 and a half. I've seen basically 11 and a half as the consensus number. I've even seen 12 and a half now and seen some mm. people going the other way under 12 and a half. I think it's a good chance he goes to the Broncos at 12, but I really like him going higher than 10 and a half. That was minus 140. Then I took Byron Murphy, the defensive tackle out of Texas. I took him under 14 and a half. You know, it seems the second most popular pick to quarterbacks is probably a good edge rusher. You have to stop that quarterback somehow. So I think you're going to have a couple of edge rushers taken high in this draft. The other one is Dallas Turner out of Alabama. I have him going under nine and a half. So at nine or sooner, and that's a plus price, plus 150 on Turner. And then a couple other minus prices, minus 150 on Jackson Powers Johnson, the center out of Oregon, under 31 and a half for his draft position. And then finally, the fine wide receiver out of Washington, Roma Dunze, under eight and a half for his draft position. That is also minus 150. A lot of fun to bet on the NFL draft, and we'll have a chance to do that again coming up tomorrow. We'll also have a chance to talk to Brady next hour, the Zurich Classic on tap for the PGA. Brady, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you next hour. Our GTD continues. Gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Game time had 35 in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard's, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, I, admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will see a long series from the Oilers and the Kings. And ultimately, I think the the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a posturpedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. He ready to roll. Denominate tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. So we've got a lot going on here, NBA playoffs. Uh, the Major League Baseball underway already here tonight. The NFL draft, but let's not forget, we're back on the ice tonight in the NHL playoffs. And nobody better to hear to break it down for us than the one and only Joe Madden in the house. Joe, it is a absolute a pleasure to talk some pucks with you here because 
Gotta love Toronto manning up, getting it done here in game number two. Now they're back home. And the question, I guess, on our minds is how much faith do we have for them to hold serve on their own home ice? Yeah, that's the hugest question, Joe, because you looked at them in the regular season and they struggled at home. The Boston Bruins mm. actually have a better road record than the Toronto Maple Leafs in the regular season did at home. So I don't know how much faith I have in the Toronto Maple Leafs here, especially with how Boston's been rotating their goaltender. So we saw Allmark in that last game. We saw Swayman in game number one, and Swayman came out so phenomenally strong. He stopped 35 of 36 shots on his net if he comes out that strong toronto is not going to be able to score today so i kind of went with a bet that i feel is going to cash no matter who wins in this one i put together a parlay joe just because i looked at boston's team total i expect boston to get three goals in this win or lose on samson off he's not getting the protection from his defense out there and i do think we will see them find the back of his goal so i took their team total over two and a half it's juicy at minus 156, but when you parlay it there with Pasternick for the anytime goal uh, from the Boston Bruins, that's coming in at plus 158, and I love it. Pasternick was such a main part of this offense all season, and we've already seen him come out, be impactful on these lines. He's on the top power play, and I think he has every opportunity to be able to find the back of Samsonov's net tonight, and I love a little plus 158 for a two-leg parlay, Joe. Yeah, and, and listen, the Bruins weren't necessarily great on the road uh, this year either. But is it me, Joe, or have you a lot of penalties so far here? A lot of power plays, a lot of, eh, it's a very chippy series, and I don't think that's going to change here tonight. No, it's not. And both of these teams have to be careful not to get in that box yeah. because we will see the other teams be able to convert when they do so. And that's kind of why I want to stay off the full game total. Looking at mm. this, you should expect these games to be lower scoring. We're not seeing that over the majority of these series so far because these teams are taking the penalties. The power play opportunities are coming. Teams aren't killing them at a rate we would expect. And that five on five play, you hit on it for Boston. They haven't been great out there on the road so i do think three goals in this one for them but these two teams are chippy they're getting those hits out there those penalties are coming and i just don't want to be on the wrong side of a total because of it with that total of five and a half i can't take it to the under because of it but i don't want to bet it to the over either yeah and no, i'm with you i you know i went first period over in that one too because i i think we'll get one one when it's all said and done uh how is dallas ever going to beat uh vegas uh can they start tonight you think it's a good idea they absolutely have to win this one tonight. If they go back to the fortress down 0-2, they are completely done, Joe. It's so hard for teams to win in Vegas. Mark Stone came out with that power play goal. Hurdle got a power play goal. For Dallas to be able to win this here at home, this is a do-or-die situation in my mind, at least. They have to win that first period. They have to come out strong, but they have to stay on the penalty box because they're not killing these penalties out there. And Jake Ottinger actually needs to come to play. I don't know what happened to him in that first game. You look at the shots on his net, 15 shots on net. He only saved 11. Like that is just appalling what we saw out of Jake Ottinger there. Dallas cracked down in the second and third period. They limited um, them to limit it on goal. It was like four and three shots in the second and third period. So Dallas needs to do that again. They can win this. Give me Dallas in the first period on the puck line and the money line. The puck line in the first period laying the half a goal is coming in at plus 158. The money line at minus 144. Love it. All right. And finally, uh, no way I'm sweating out an under to Kings Edmonton. You're going to go team total over for him? Yeah, I'm going to look at the Kings total over two and a half at minus 118 we know one thing and it skinner does allow those goals to come in no matter what if edmonton's winning or losing here i'm looking at Connor mcdavid for the two plus can't stop and out there i'd also ladder it up to two plus three plus points sorry at plus 250 i think he has every ability to continue yep. out there on the ice joe yeah, take advantage of those opportunities while you can early on in the NHL playoffs. Love that, Joe Madden. We appreciate you. Good luck with those tickets. Game time decisions continues here on The Grid.
Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Game time had 35 in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, I admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on SportsGrid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth, and Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will see a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. And that's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a posturepedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. He ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. As uh, off and running Major League Baseball here tonight, a couple of games underway. We got about a half a dozen games coming up top of the hour for first pitch. We'll talk baseball coming up, but we also have coming up top of the hour. Yeah, we got tip off. It is game two between the Celtics and the Miami Heat here. And once again, we've got touchdowns for uh, for a line spread here. And Mark Zeno knows all about it here. As again, we're looking at two touchdowns here as a spread. Zeno Celtics at home. Now, mind you, that game was easy, game number one, but uh, those that were holding and laying 14, 15 points with the Celtics had to sweat that thing out until the very last uh, minute here. So I I can't run to the window laying 14 and a half here. Is there any other way we should be looking at this game? Yeah, I mean, look, there there are other ways, but I'll say this. I I can run to the window and lay 14 with, with the Boston Celtics. There, there's not a world where they Miami should keep this thing close. Uh, if they are, that means Boston is playing really, really bad. And so that, to me, is one of those things where, you know, uh, Boston is a markedly better team, even you know, with Jimmy Butler on the floor. And I don't think those two teams are close. You could take last year and leave it there. But still, this is a, a Boston team that does everything better. Now, that said, you know, when you get in a situation like this, I always look to the team total market, right? Uh, you try to figure out which team is, is going to be able to score more, which team is going to be able to defend better. Uh, and you go down that road, and that's that's what I've done here. I mean, you know, the the team total for the Miami Heat uh, is an absurdly low number. And, Joey, look, you know I made my bones the last month and a half of the NBA regular season betting really bad teams to get over their team total with quite a measure of success. Now I'm betting a playoff team to get over their team total here. That is the lowest number that I've seen, you know, for the better part of a decade uh, for a team total in an actual playoff game. So – With the Miami Heat being at 93 and a half, like essentially, Joe, all they have to do is avoid the 14-point quarter that they had in the third quarter against Boston. In theory, if all they do is score Mm -hmm. 22 points, 23, 24 points a quarter, we're home. Like they don't even have to get to 25. So I'm not asking Miami to do a lot here. And for a team that shot so poorly from the field and from three in, in game one, as long as they have some regression to the mean here, they should be able to do it. My biggest concern with Miami going over their team total is the pace. Mm. They play really slow. And without Jimmy Butler on the floor, they'll probably play a little bit slower. But I'm hopeful that Boston 
can push the pace, score a lot early, and force Miami to keep up. Um, and, and Boston really doesn't have to do all that much work on the defensive end. I think they realized that in game one uh, just to be able to outscore this team and win a basketball game. So but when you see a number like this, Joe, at 93 and a half, I mean, come on. This is a, a, a ludicrous number to post, but it does make sense given that their team total was 97 and a half in game one. And look where that number went. So I, I get the math of the whole thing, but I'm going to ride with the heat here. Eric Spolstra is a fantastic coach. He's not going to get embarrassed two games in a row. At least that's what I'm banking on and that the heat will come out here and be able to score 94 points. And oh, by the way, Joe, they've only been held back to back games under hundred twice this year. Once in early November yeah. uh, against the Knicks and Nets in New York, and then another time in late January um, when they were in the middle of a seven-game losing streak. But other than that, every other time they scored less than 100, the next game they bounced back to score at least 100. I've got some wiggle room here to get between 94 and 99 somewhere. Yeah, and history tells us against this uh, Celtics team, they have, uh, they've pretty much gone over 93 and a half points in, in every game over the last couple of seasons. So uh, this would be a historically bad game for Miami, but uh, they would tell you they had that one last game. So uh, I'm with you 100% here. Look for a bounce back with uh, the Miami Heat. Uh, also, listen, if you're New Orleans... Congratulations. You, you should have stole that first game there, especially the way they out-rebounded uh, the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, and that's what kept them in that game, not to mention the second-chance points. Hopper. Every time they missed a shot, they had another shot because OKC couldn't grab a, uh, a rebound. If they clean that up, is this a blowout here tonight? I mean, the biggest thing that stood out to me about this game, more than anything, was the drop in the total was six points Oof. like Joe anytime any number moves six points mm. that's a significant amount without an injury to a player right like the, the line moving six from one game to the next game is a massive number game one was 216 and a half we're down to 210 now I get it both teams stayed under 100 in the first game but you also had both of these teams shoot epically bad epically is an aggressive word they shot really really bad uh and for a team like Oklahoma City you know, that scores, that's a top 10 team in offensive efficiency, you know, for them to, uh, to to shoot as bad as they did, again, I would think there would have to be some semblance of regression here. Both of these defenses are good. I don't want to take anything away from them. But for both of these teams not to get to 105 or be in that range, to me, you would have to have back-to-back -back really poor shooting nights, or I guess you could phrase it the other way and say back-to-back -back really great defensive nights on both teams. Because in reality, all it takes is one of these teams to get to 110 or more and in theory, we're good. But I, I would lean on the Thunder here to have the better offensive night and bounce back and figure this thing out because I don't think you can keep that many shooters and scorers silent two games in a row. Uh, and if they do, I think this thing goes over. I'm not a huge fan of betting overs for the game in, in any of these NBA series right now, but with the number dropping too much, I just think that's too many points to, to lower the total from 216 to 210. Yeah, it, it totally is. And and a big reason for it was quite honestly, New Orleans at 52 to 44, and they, they grabbed 36% of their missed shots. Uh, and that maybe is the biggest thing that we've always said with OKC. They're not the biggest team. And it looks like, uh, you know, New Orleans was able to go in there, bang around, throw a lot of bodies at guys, and it kind of slowed the game down. A little bit here but if they control the pace you got to figure a team totals at all this thing is flying over okc i would think so but again if new orleans defense does what they did in game one and i think it's one of those things you'll know early. yeah you'll know yeah. i mean early on in that game you could tell okc was not making shots you know just because of the, the, yep. the way they were playing defense in the coverage so it'll be one of these things where you know, I don't really like to advise like first quarter bets per se, but if you're feeling like OKC is going to bounce yep. back here, take them in the first quarter, get it out of the way, watch 12 minutes of basketball and then shut the TV off for the rest of the night because you don't care and you cash a ticket. But that's kind of the way I would look at it because if OKC ain't hitting them early, guess what? I don't think there's going to be a lapse defensively where all of a sudden in the third quarter, they come out and hit 60% of their shots in the field. I just, you know, New Orleans defense is too good for that to happen. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, listen, we got a couple of teams uh, down 2-0 here that have games coming up. Uh, do you give the Sixers a chance still to make it a six-game series, seven-game series, or are you thinking it might be over for the Sixers here? I mean, I don't want to let my Knicks bias get in the way, but the bottom <laughs> line here is that the Knicks have managed to win two games 
with their best player not playing his best in both of those games. That's a bad yeah. sign. Like, if Jalen Brunson comes out and drops 35, I don't think Philadelphia is winning. Like, Jalen Brunson has been yeah. bad shooting. He's He's been okay scoring just because he's volume, but he's not played anywhere near his best game. If he plays his best game, Philadelphia is in real trouble. And that's the problem for the Sixers, that the Knicks have managed to figure out a way to win two games with their best player just having very average to below average nights. Number eight pick tomorrow, your Atlanta Falcons. What are they doing? I kind of hope they take a wide receiver just to piss everybody off. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we'll see. I, I, I rather enjoy that. Um, I, I look, there's, there's, a, there's a philosophical logic to it. You have Kirk Cousins. You have B. Sean Robinson. You have Drake London. Yes. You have Kyle Pitts. Just outscore everybody. Like, let the playoffs be what the playoffs are going to be. Worry about that when you get there. But score 30 points a game, and guess what? You're going to win the division. You're getting a home playoff game. We'll see what shakes out after that. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that philosophy. Nope. It's really hard to fix multiple things at the same time in one offseason. So if you go all in on offense because you spent $180 million on your quarterback, you may as well go all in. I, I, people would say that they're going to take a defensive end. I would think they would trade back if they're going to do it because Dallas turnover eight is too high. I agree 100%. Uh, your uh, boots on the ground, as they say there in Atlanta, watching the Falcon fan base lose their mind tomorrow night. Zeno, uh, good luck here tonight. Enjoy it, my man. We'll talk to you again soon. Game time decisions. We'll close out the hour next year on the grid. <laughs>
sweating out and under in any game ever in this series. Like, absolutely not. So I don't know that the Kings are going to win this, but I bet you they're going to score enough goals to help uh, to help us get an over ticket across the board here. I agree with you wholeheartedly. All right, we talked about this on the uh, on game live last night with uh, Wetzel and Sheriff Pan about the Colorado Winnipeg series. How, yeah, we're not going to mm-hmm. get 13 goals, but I'm not betting the under either here. Now, we got the over last night, barely, but we got it. And I feel the same way about the Everton game. I'm a little surprised, Joe, that Kings are going back to Talbot net. I thought maybe they'd go to Riddich, but they're going to stick with Talbot here. Uh, no. Mm. Uh, you want to wait a little bit? You know, I mean, hey, I hope the five, first five minutes there are no goals scored. We get a better price. I'm good with that, but I'm not betting a, a pregame under. No way in hell. It's just not happening here. No. I'm on the, uh, the pregame over here. If we get a goal early, I'm probably going to hit the over a time or two uh, as well here. I expect goals. You want to go Connor McDavid to get over uh, two points? I'm golden there. Hyman to score another goal? Yep. Fine. I think there's a million ways you can attack this game. You can bet Edmonton to win and pick your favorite goal scorer. I think McDavid will like yep. the lamp tonight, by the way. Uh, since he had so many assists last game, he's going to score tonight. You want to take Drysdale? You want to take Hyman? Nugent Hopkins? I think there's a million ways to attack this game, and they're all on the Edmonton side. I uh, I agree with you 100%. I think it'll be it'll be fun. That was kind of right. The Edmonton team we thought we would get, we did get it. I think that continues uh, here tonight for us. Uh, do you have uh, Toronto? I know you said when we talked about this before this series, Toronto is the better team, right? Uh, Boston's tough on the ice, but them winning that game too might it, it did my eyes that this is Toronto's now to lose. Because they're not going to go home and lose to Boston. I agree. I, I was on Toronto before the series to win. Yeah. I thought this was going to be their year, mainly because, you know, Boston, in my mind, is just that, you know, can you control Pasternak? If you can control Pasternak, you're going to do well. All right, you're just going to do well. And I, But I, like you said, if they would have lost on Monday, I would have oh. thought, oh, my God, now you're going back to Toronto and that media storm. And they would have been all, mm-hmm. uh, you lose to Boston again? You can't be poor. I mean, it would have yep. been a nightmare for the Toronto players, but you won. You split the series. That's all you want to do in the first two games on the road, right? Split. You come home here. Now, they're still not going to have Neil under tonight. So I think that does right. hurt. But we saw Austin Matthews go berserk pretty much on Monday all over the place. They are the better team. Now, that's say Boston can't win. All right. Swayman will be back in net tonight. And Swayman has not lost to the Bruins this year. He won game that's one correct. and he won every game, uh, I think, 3 0 during the regular season here. So I'm sure that gives Boston some confidence. I don't think it'll be a blowout, but yeah, I think Toronto wins the game. Well, it, this is another one of those spots where stay out of the damn box, Toronto. Stop, stop, get out of bed. Because if you let Boston muck this thing up and it comes down to power plays, then, you know, here we go. You, you've got the advantage. Stay out of the box and let it roll. Uh, I don't know what we're going, uh, what are we going to get with Dallas here? Because uh, I think you like them before the series started but that looked like a whole different vegas team i mean you got mark stone out there i mean it's like you know, like what is this that we didn't see this team at all this year and they come rolling out and doing exactly what they've done always against dallas does anything change here you could pretty much make an argument that whatever could go wrong for the stars went wrong oh. in game one right you face this uh, oh. Vegas team, and you, you're already saying it. You're mentioning it. They hadn't really played together, right? Stone's been out for months with the uh, the lacerated spleen, all right? The hurdle, <laughs> who they acquired at the tra- trade deadline, maybe played two games with them. Peter Angelo had been out with an appendectomy, so they hadn't played together. It made all the sense in the world to go with Dallas in game one at home, and Dallas might be the best team in the NHL, at least so we thought, all right? And then Vegas comes out and puts that kind of performance together. Hurdle scores, Stone scores. Like, oh, God. And I'll tell you, man. Vegas is only going to get better, you know, because they're going to get that chemistry together. They're going to get used to playing again here. I thought Dallas had a huge advantage in game one, and now you sort of let that slip here. This is a must win for Dallas. You go down 2-0, and now you're going to go to Vegas? What's your best hope? Done. Split and go back to Dallas 3-1? Mm-hmm. This is a must win for, for Dallas tonight. As, but I, I love them in game one, ate it there. Listen, I'm going to bet them again tonight, but it'll be a smaller bet. Okay, smaller bet here. I don't think they're going to go down 2-0 here, but I was very impressed with how Vegas played in game one here. And I said, I think everybody in the NHL, by the way, is please, please beat Vegas, please, because they're only going to get better as the playoffs go along here. And if they so if they go past Dallas, I think they also become the favorites out west to make the Stanley Cup. 
I, I, it was an unbelievable start. I thought once the, the goal was wiped out for offsides there for Dallas, the tying goal early in the game, and then they pulled it down, I'm like, no, it, it's just, it's not going to be. They outshot uh, the Vegas Golden Knights 29 to 15 and 19 to 7 over the final two periods, Kurtz, and they still couldn't take down Vegas. They are going to need a much bigger effort here tonight because, like you said, this series is over. It goes back 2 0 uh, to Dallas. It is absolutely over here. Uh, do get you it. think yeah, that uh, they, they should play better? And the price on them tonight is not bad, right? 160, maybe 165. Do you think this is another over here tonight? I do. All right. I mean, because uh, listen, I don't trust the Vegas goaltenders, Thompson and Hill. They've been banged up. Thompson no, is okay in the uh, game. I am concerned about Ettinger. All right. I really thought the reason yeah. why I like Dallas so much coming into the playoffs, by the way, is I thought not that he was going to be that goalie that we saw the first time he came against Calgary. Right? He was a brick wall. That was an incredible performance. But I thought he was going to be closer to that than maybe the goalie yep. we had seen for most of the season where he was, he was good, okay, but not better than that. I thought he was going to be better than good. You know, maybe very good. Yep. So that's what I expected from him here. And I didn't see that in game one. And you already said that what the shots no. on goal were, right? Uh, he should have played better here. So, yes, I kind of lean toward, I kind of lean towards Dallas at the over here. Maybe another 4 3 game. Yeah, I, I, I kind of with you here. And the way they came out far, and I would, you know, first period over uh, a goal and a half might not be a bad look either. George Kurtz, enjoy those games tonight, my friend. Go Islanders! We'll close it out next. Game time decisions. <laughs>says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Game time had 35 yep. in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard's, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, we I were. admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the, uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top-end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth, and Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would say a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately I think the, the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a a, a, a possipedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they need, those things. He's ready to roll. Denominate tonight. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game time decision. Uh, we look to close out this first hour. We've got much more to get to here on the Sports Grid Network as we get ready just about 10 minutes away from the opening tip at the Garden in Boston as the uh, Miami Heat try to even up that series against the Celtics uh, 1-1, but kind of hard to do when you've uh, when the, the market says you're a 
a 14 and a half point underdog in this one. So we will see what happens here with the Heat. A quick update, by the way, Major League Baseball off and running. Uh, they can't finish the game. The Orioles uh, are threatening here in the top of the ninth. They are up 6-4 right now. The Angels trying to hold the uh, hold it down to see if they can't uh, come back here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. We'll let you know what happens on that one. And Boston, a quick two runs against the Guardians uh, there. We told you that total sitting at seven and a half. Seven hits in this game already. We're in the bottom of the third right now. The Red Sox scored too quick. And they are up. We also have the Phillies on top of the Reds, one nothing, and the Brewers and the Pirates uh, already top of the second. Nothing, nothing in that one. Dodgers scored early against the Nats, and the Tigers and the Rays at the trot uh, just got underway here. Nothing, nothing in that one. Of course, uh, earlier today, we also saw the Cardinals. Uh, bounce back after an absolute shellacking by the Diamondbacks. 5-1, the Cardinals got it done there. And the Mets scored two more to finish up the Giants. 8-2 in that game. We'll have much more baseball coming up next hour as the A's and Yankees go at it. Braves, Marlins, White Sox, Twins, and of course the Astros and the Cubs at Wrigley, I'll tell you now, keep an eye on that wind, double-digit winds blowing dead in from center field at Wrigley Field here. That total hovering around seven and a half, but that is nothing compared to the total uh, that the Miami Heat are looking at here tonight. We had Mark Zinno on a little bit earlier, and he pointed out, because him and I saw the same exact thing this morning, the team total for the Miami Heat hovering around 93 and a half. It has been bet up a little bit, 94 and a half of what we're seeing right now. But the reality is, listen, they scored 94 points in the first game and they couldn't have hit water if they fell out of a boat. Now, mind you, this also uh, required them to score in the teens in the second or third quarter there. So the way Miami is going to win this game, as far as I'm concerned, is very simple. If they're going to win, they are going to need uh, to play better perimeter defense. Uh, they are absolutely going to need the Boston Celtics not to shoot, you know, 45% from three and make 22 of them. And I, I think that's all realistic uh, when it comes to this game here tonight, because the and I get nothing taking nothing away from the Boston Celtics here. They are a very good three-point shooting team, but they went 22 of 46. Uh, they can't hit 22 threes in this game. And if they don't, then Miami's going to have a very good opportunity to keep this thing close late. And then at that particular point, yes, I think 100 points is in the, uh, the future for Miami tonight, just simply because Duncan Robinson has to make more shots. Tyler Hero has to make more shots. Caleb Martin, all the guys that Miami needed to have good offensive games didn't. And not because it was some sort of lockdown defense from Boston, but mostly because they had missed a ton of wide open shots. So I don't need a whole lot to go right for Miami offensively to get up and over the 93 and a half, 94 and a half in that team total and i am looking right now at the board and seeing it move a little bit as uh, more money continues to come in on the over in this game and i think a lot of that has to do with the with the market saying listen miami is not going to be held to 90 points they're not going back to back 90 point games in the playoffs here hero will be more involved caleb martin will be duncan robinson and bam out of uh is gotta also get uh get involved in the paint in this one so we need a few things to go right for miami don't think they'll win this but i do think uh if you're thinking that uh, you won't be sweating this game out in the fourth quarter with two minutes to go i think you're wrong there i think uh this is entirely too many points for a team with their back against the wall with a resume like the Miami Heat. That game getting ready to tip off uh, just in a couple of minutes, and we will have you covered next hour here as Game Time Decisions rolls off on the grid. Come back and join us.
Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Game time had 35 in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, I admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth, and Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would say a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second-best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a posipedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. He ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. Yeah, I know what you meant. Hey, welcome back in. It is game <laughs> time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. We got plenty going on here. NBA playoff basketball getting ready to tip off with Miami and Boston. We also have the puck getting ready to drop. Toronto taking on the Boston Bruins. So a uh, big night for the city of Boston here. Can uh, both teams get it done? And it's also still a big week. Let us not forget. Maybe a little calm before the storm. Uh, the Zurich Classic uh, taking center stage in New Orleans, and nobody better to talk golf with than our good friend Brady uh, Cannon. And, Brady, let me just uh, right off the bat ask you, is Scotty Scheffler in this one? Because if he is, <laughs> I want absolutely nothing to do with betting this uh, tournament, my man. What's happening? Yeah, he he is not here, and he's made it awful <laughs> tough to hit an outright these days if you're not uh, cool. invested in Scheffler, right? Thank goodness I've actually bet him in game three different times now at Bay Hill, uh, at the Masters, and again mm-hmm. last week at the RBC Heritage. And yeah, I laid some big numbers. And hey, that's the way it is these days. He's like Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. He's a he's a better's dream. He doesn't lose. So, you know, uh, good luck to he and his wife and and the birth of their first child. I think the next time we'll probably see him as the PGA Championship. But like you say, maybe the calm after the storm, two straight weeks of high profile events. And now we get to have a little fun down in New Orleans. You know, let's let's eat well. Let's drink well. Let's have you know, let's team up and have a nice little casual event. And and I'll be honest with you, Joe, I I didn't risk a lot of money this week. It's hard enough to try and pick a guy that one guy to win a golf tournament. Now now you have a two two headed dynamic, uh, a two player dynamic, and you're trying to you know, handicap the skill sets from both guys. It's really a lot. It, it's double, if not triple, if not exponentially more guesswork mm. when you pair two golfers together. I tried to keep it simple. Guys that are in good form, guys that seem to have a little camaraderie, know each other, friendly with each other, what have you, could, you know, possibly spark each other, playing well, whatever. Uh, and then also complementary skill sets. I had a couple of pairings that jumped out at me this week where one guy's a terrific ball striker and the other guy's a fantastic putter or has a great short game. That seems like a pretty good match, right? So uh, that that's the way I did it this week. Uh, there, there's a lot of random names here in this tournament. There's also a few stars. Rory's here for the first time. He's paired with fellow Irishman uh, Shane Lowry. 
Uh, the 2022 champs of Shoffley and Cantlay are here. You know, I know your rule. We won't bet on Shoffley. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and you've got Colin Morikawa and Kurt Kitayama. So, you know, there is a little bit of star power, but it's actually kind of a fun event. I, I, I don't mind. It, it is kind of a nice, you know, respite after what we've been through the last few weeks of high intensity golf. Yeah, well, I mean, if I ain't betting uh, Xander Shoffley on his own, I sure as hell ain't betting him if you throw <laughs> Cantley in the middle of it. Absolutely right. not. But they they are champs. And just so the folks understand at home, you know, it's best ball, I believe, on what, Thursday and Saturday and then alternate shot on Friday and Sunday, which makes it very unique uh, for those that don't know. It also makes it a lot harder uh to handicap because the alternate shot on friday and sunday is usually what ends up the teams that are really good with that dynamic usually end up winning this thing and so what are you looking for ball strikers here are you looking for short game how do you approach handicapping this well you're exactly right joe it, it is best ball and that's not a scramble it means they mm -hmm. each play their own ball and the player who has the lowest score of the two that becomes the team score and then yep. on Friday and Sunday, yeah, they all, one guy hits off the tee, player B hits uh, hits the approach, player A, you know, back and forth. And that, and you're right. That's oftentimes what determines the winner. It, you're going to see a lot of teams shoot over par for the alternate yep. shot days. Uh, if you shoot like two, three, four under on alternate shot, you're, you're gaining a lot of ground on the field. So I looked for guys in good form. I landed on Morikawa and Kitayama mm. at 12 to 1. They're both in excellent form. Now, they don't necessarily have complementary skill sets. They're both more ball striker types. But Colin Morikawa has been red hot with the putter the last couple of weeks. So if that continues, that could be a really good combination. They're both Las Vegas residents. You know, I know they play together a lot out here in town. They're probably very familiar with one another's games. So I like that comfort level they probably have as well. That's the tough part about the handicap, too. None of this is really quantifiable. So it's a lot of guesswork here and hopes that they have a good match. Uh, mm. Hoagie and McNeely, Tom Hoagie and uh, Maverick McNeely. This one really jumped out at me. Hoagie, one of the best, very best ball strikers in this field. And McNeely, one of the very best short games in, in the entire sport. So that one makes a lot of sense. I took them at 25 to one. Uh, Nick Taylor and Adam Hadwin, Team Canada, finished runner up here last year. Mm. And this is another pairing of a ball striker and a short game wizard. Hadwin being the short game specialist, Taylor being the ball striker. Good form too. Hadwin has three top six finishes this season. Taylor won the Phoenix Open, holding off by the way, Scotty Scheffler, and also finished 12th at Bay Hill. Got them at 35 to one. And then a couple of longer bombs, Alex Smalley and Maddie Schmid, uh, mm. Smalley just finished sixth last week in, at Corrales Puna Canta, and both guys play Pete Dye courses really well. We have a Pete Dye track this week, TPC Louisiana, so maybe that holds a little weight right there. And then finally, Nico Echevarria and Max Greiserman, both guys in pretty darn good form the last five or six weeks mm. with a few top 20 finishes. They both make a lot of birdies. So, you know, as you dive a little further down the board, again, I'm just looking for that pairing that you know, good form combined with complementary skill sets. And you throw it against the wall and see if it sticks. Yeah, Nick Hardy, Davis Riley, I believe, were the winners last year at 30 under, just to give folks an idea of what we're looking at uh, with this tournament here. And Hoagie, didn't he, wasn't he with Harris English last year in this tournament? Because I don't think McNeely, he wasn't with McNeely no. a year right, ago, right. right? Right, this is right. the first so time they've been ever paired together. Uh, and and I, yeah. English is a, not a bad pairing with Hoagie either, but he's a little bit more mm. of the ball striker type, as is Hoagie. Yes. So I, I really like the com. This was the first one that jumped out at me, the combination of yeah, those skills. I agree. So, and yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, th this is a tournament where you dumb down the risk. There's a lot more yes. randomness going on here. I had a couple of pretty good teams last year in Keith Mitchell and Sun J.M. and Wyndham mm. Clark and Bo Hostler. I think they both finished top five, if I recall correctly. But out of yep. nowhere on Sunday come Davis Riley and, and Nick Hardy in the alternate yeah. shot format. Crushed they went it. nuts. And yep. to your point, <laughs> yeah. and they won the darn thing. So, yeah, yep. I, I would rest easy a little bit on the amount of risk this week because um, yep. it's a lot of randomness. Save some bullets for uh, the Wells Fargo Championship, which will be a signature event in a couple weeks. 
at Quail Hollow in North Carolina. And then the following week will be the PGA Championship. We'll get back on the Scotty right. train, maybe. I, I was going to say, I hate to ask, but I'll ask anyway. I don't know what the future market looks for uh, the PGA Champion. But I'm going to gather he's the favorite here, and it's probably <laughs> not even remotely close. Correct. And it's very interesting what has happened as of late. When he won the Masters, I think he went to about 450 or plus 400 for, for all the other majors. Yeah. Since he won the RBC Heritage, he's now plus 350. A uh, little bit oh. higher for the British, like four to one for the British, because I think Jeez. that brings a little bit more volatility <laughs> into play. Here's another wow. one for you, Joe. He was 80 to one to win all four majors this year. After oh. he won the Masters, he went to 50. Oh. And after he won the Heritage, he's now at 40 to one to win the rest of the three majors this season. He might not even show up at the PGA. I mean, I think he's yeah. absolutely going to make an effort to, but who knows, you know, if, if he's playing, you know, Daddy Scheffler for a couple of weeks and he, he could be rusty. He's he's not going to be at the yep. range 24-7 when he's trying to be a dad. So the PGA right. becomes very interesting if you're betting that, uh, you know, for him to win all four majors this season. It, something tells me, though, he'll fall right from the parking lot onto the tee and win yeah. by 10. Oh, what it's do I have just, to do? Hit greens that, again and just hit it down well, the middle? Oh, really? Okay. He, does, sure, he makes it look it pretty easy, out. doesn't he? My goodness. The most this unbelievable guy. stretch of golf we've seen. Brady, we appreciate it, my man. Enjoy. We'll be back. Game time decisions. gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Game time had 35 yep. in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard's, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, we I were. admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will take a long series from the Oilers and the Kings. And ultimately, I think the the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second-best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. And that's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a possibility, whatever they call it, a ceiling, whatever they do, those things. He's ready to roll. The nominate tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in uh, game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. A very happy Wednesday to you as we are off and running here. A little NHL. Hockey here tonight. The playoffs continue. Same thing in the NBA as the Heat and the Celtics getting ready to uh, to tip off there in an all-important game number two. But we got plenty of Major League Baseball underway here. And we welcome back in our good friend George Kurtz to take a look at the board here tonight, uh, Kurtz. Uh, it was 
Life or death there, the Orioles and Kimbrel, shocker, uh, but they held on 6-5, finally beat the Angels there, George. Uh, but I uh, I thought the under was not a bad look in this Red Sox-Guardians game. It's 2-0. Red Sox scored quick early on, but that the weather there looks absolutely miserable. I can't believe they played last night. Uh, the under hit there it was 7.5 here tonight. And uh, hopefully we can uh, we can maintain that as well. Were you looking at that one at all? I was, but I was going in the opposite direction. I would, I wanted to take the over with Carrasco, and I forget the ball, uh, the Boston pitcher I never even heard of on the mound here. But the weather did scare me away because it, did, it does play more towards the under there. So I ended up not playing that. But uh, like I said, if the, if the weather would have been decent, I didn't need good weather, just decent. I was taking the right. over. Yeah, it was cold and miserable and uh, threat of rain in that whole area. Not not a lot of fun to play baseball in, that is uh, for sure. Uh, the Brewers underway against the Pirates. What the hell happened to the Brewers' bats, uh, by the way? I, I think this is probably a halfway decent game uh, for the Brewers. It's a bullpen game for both, really, both teams there. But I thought maybe the Brewers uh, at a pretty good price here tonight to get one from the Pirates. What were you thinking? Well, nothing happened to the Brewers' bats. Now, you and I have talked about the Brewers a bunch, right? They were they were batting above their heads. True. They were. Right. They were batting above their heads, and now it's gone back to the mean, right? It's gone back to what we yep. expected here. Kristen Yellich being out of the lineup, I'm sure that hurts too. You know, no doubt as well, I guess, the best bat they have there. But actually, in my mind, they're playing how now I expected the Brewers to play. All right, now, if you're looking for a boring series, the Yankees and Brewers play each other over the weekend in Milwaukee. Maybe uh, a new team Oof. might be able to score a run in that one. I just think the Brewers going back to the norm here. Another game stayed away from. I didn't touch this one. I would probably lean more towards Pittsburgh here, but not nowhere near enough to trust anything more than a, you know, a little, a little sprinkle here and there. But uh, I didn't touch this one. Yeah, bullpen game for both here as uh, injuries continue to pile up uh, also here. Brewers, Red Sox, uh, starting pitchers. Uh, it's getting kind of – crazy here but the phillies uh are look to get it done here against the reds tonight one nothing phillies on top great pitching uh matchup here turnbull was on the mound he has been really really good lodolo for uh the reds the same uh no harper i believe uh on maternity leave i believe his wife's having a baby so they'll have to do without him uh didn't work out great last night for them what about in this one here tonight as you said, a uh, really good pitching matchup here. Sprinkle mm. on the under here. I said, no, not a big player to sprinkle on the under mm. here. I have an anytime home run for Schwarber as well. Let's hope we can get a hold of one here and put one out. Just a little fun little bet there. Uh, I do like the Phillies tonight, but barely. It's going to be a close game. Nothing where I would go, oh, my God, it's a, a lock of the night. I have a three-legged parlay as far as teams winning. The Phillies are not one of them. I don't know what the hell a knack is, but he's pitching for the Dodgers, and they're up 3 nothing. I guess it really doesn't make a difference what your name is if they're going to spot you uh, three runs quickly, bottom of the third over the Nats here. Kind of do a die in that game yesterday. I know a lot of folks were, uh, laid the run and a half and had to sweat that thing out last night. Dodgers eventually uh, got it done late here. Were you looking another run line opportunity for the Dodgers here tonight? Yeah, now you hit a game where I have quite a few bets on this game. The Dodgers are part of that three-team parlay I have there. I do have them on the run line. I took Mookie Betts, Otani, Ooh. Freeman, all to get at least two uh, two bases in this game as well here. So I don't know who did what here uh, coming on the show and setting up, of course. But uh, up 3 nothing. I'm happy here. Knack, it's probably his last start. If you look at it, he's lined up the same Spot as Walker Bueller, who's also pitching in a rehab game tonight. So I think as soon as Bueller comes back, which could be as soon as next week, Knack, well, he'll have a knack for the bullpen, I guess, or a knack to go back down uh, to the minor leagues here. So I think it's his last start tonight. Walker Bueller will take his spot in the rotation when he returns. Yeah, you got uh, Tigers and Rays knotted up one apiece here, bottom of the third at the trop. I thought this was a good under spot. Can I tell you, I, I thought – Flaherty was wasting away in St. Louis. Uh, I, that organization is not what it once was. Uh, but I, I've been pretty impressed with what he has done since he got the hell out of there here. He's been throwing really well. We ain't getting a lot of runs in the trop with these two lineups anyway. So I thought the under was not a bad look. What'd you look at? Same exact thing going on here. And you said it. Flaherty is better than we thought, right? We didn't expect this from him. We thought he his career might have been over. Uh, we'll see what happens as yep. the season rolls along. You know, those innings add up, but I'm on the under as well in this one. Neither team really has that kind of offense. 
What did you do with the Yankees here? Because uh, I know a, a contingency, George, that are are going on the home run prop for Aaron Judge, and they're betting no every night, and making a lot of money. Uh, so what what are we doing here with the Yankees? He came close last night. He actually looked like the judge oh, yeah. of, of oh, last yeah. night. He, he came close, but didn't put it out. I don't think that close. pays more, though. I don't know that it, that it pays. It does not. It's not a close. It's not even a close. He came close. Oh, that's plus 240. There you go. You hit. Yeah. No, they don't have that. Uh, the Yankees aren't under right now. Until they start to hit, they're mm-hmm. under. Take the under in the game. You can take the under on the Yankees team total. Last 42 innings, the Yankees have batted. 42 innings, they've scored in four of them. Four of them. Mm-hmm. It's somehow they have three two in those five games. So Yankees aren't hitting at all. They have they do have bigger innings. They'll score three or four runs. Last night scored four runs in the first inning, Joe, and then went one for twenty one the rest of the game. And the one hit they got was an infield hit that was immediately wiped out by a double play. I just can't believe it here. All right, we got uh, wind blowing in at Wrigley Field here uh, tonight as well against the Astros. Again, two teams. Are we trusting them to have some sort of great big night at the plate here, George? No, Suzuki was already out. You mentioned injuries. Now Bellinger's yeah. out, too. He's got the two for a fractured ribs here. Uh, no, under. Astros aren't playing all that great. Give me the under. That's it. Under, under, and under again. George Kurtz, uh, absolute pleasure here, my man. Plenty of baseball and NHL here tonight. Good luck with those tickets. Game time decisions returns here on the grid. Gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Game time had 35 in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard's, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, I admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on SportsGrid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would say a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a possipedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. He ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game time decisions here on this Wednesday here where we are off and running as we get ready for the NBA uh, tip off here between Boston, the Celtics, and the Miami Heat. We are already underway uh, on the ice as the puck dropped a little while ago between the Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple Leafs. That series knotted up one apiece and uh, no score, but we did have a power play opportunity for Boston 
in which, uh, or Toronto rather, in which Boston was able to kill. Uh, we do have some baseball we'll get to here, but in the spirit of the association, our good friend Davis Maddock, he's got up well, a same game parlay here tonight he wants to share with us. So, Davis, what do you got in the association tonight? All right, guys, we are back with another same game parlay over on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Second game in the NBA tonight, the New Orleans Pelicans playing at the Oklahoma City Thunder. We're beginning by taking the Thunder money line. They win game one. Much better team. No Zion for the Pelicans. The Thunder were the second best team in the NBA in the regular season. I've got no reason to doubt them. Shea Gilgis Alexander had a tough time with Herb Jones in game one. I expect that he will have learned about that matchup. So we're going to take Shea to score 30 or more points in this game. And then OKC center Chet Holmgren to record two or more blocks in this game. They're continuing to play the ground bound Jonas Valanciunas. I think that favors Chet getting some blocks here. And then we are also going to add Joe Val, Jonas Valanciunas to record over 11 and a half rebounds. He had 20 rebounds in game one. City doesn't really play a true center. Chet, pretty skinny, likes to stick around the exterior of the formation. This four-leg same game parlay gives us plus 433 odds. OKC money line. Shea to score 30 or more points. Chet to record two or more blocks. And Jonas Valanciunas over 11 and a half rebounds in this game. Good luck tonight, everybody. All right. Thanks so much for that, Davis. Uh, we are underway at the Garden, by the way, for the Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat. Uh, and it's uh, been a nice little back and forth early on. And like we thought, uh, Miami is uh, hitting some threes here. It's a 14 to 12 game right now with about six minutes to go in the first uh, the first quarter. So this was exactly what we had uh, hoped to see. Don't forget, in game one, Miami kind of got boat raced early in the game. It was 12-0, 14-2, uh, and, and, you know, the Celtics kind of never took their foot off the gas here. But so far, it's uh, it's working out pretty well here, and a nice back-and-forth game as uh, Tyler Hero's getting into rhythm here. And now uh, the Miami Heat have a lead in this series that I don't think they have ever had. They're up 15-14 to 14 right now. Uh, with the uh, with about five minutes to go. So that is certainly a game we are going to keep an eye on as uh, the Miami Heat, who absolutely nobody thinks can actually win this game, uh, but they're going to play it anyway. And you would think after the Miami Heat, you would think people would uh, would maybe just maybe give them the benefit of the doubt. But instead, no. Uh, no winning for you, Miami Heat, without Jimmy Butler. Uh, well, we'll see. If you laid the 14, 14 and a half, we'll see how that works out in the fourth quarter. But right now, much closer and much more, uh, well, more entertaining game than what we got the first go around. We will have the New Orleans Pelicans as well as the Oklahoma City Thunder getting ready to do battle as New Orleans finds itself in exactly the same spot the Heat do. They do not want to go back home, uh, trailing two games to none to OKC. Uh, and that is an interesting game because we have seen the Pelicans get some money here. So the Pelicans are looking like one of those uh, trendy dogs here tonight on the card. We'll see uh, what happens with that. But Zion has said there is hope that he can come back at some particular point. Well, they're going to have to at least steal one. And keep in mind, too, New Orleans much better at home. Uh, I mean, much better on the road this year, ironically enough, than at home. So we'll see. Uh, the argument can be made that New Orleans had their opportunity. New Orleans should have stole game one there, but just... Uh, Ingram was nowhere to be found, and C.J. McCollum couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. Two of nine from the perimeter missed uh, a ton of shots. So if they can clean that up and keep dominating on the boards, uh, they might very well have a good opportunity of heading back to New Orleans up one apiece. So we'll have much more on the NBA, Major League Baseball, and don't forget... The NFL draft is 24 hours from now. Much more to dig into with that as Game Time Decisions continues on the grid.
Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Game time had 35 in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard's, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, I admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth, and Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would say a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. And that's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a posturepedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they need, those things. He's ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. Uh, 18 apiece, Miami. The Heat taking on the Boston Celtics right now in the first. So finally, it looks like we're going to get a good one there. Uh, Still nothing, nothing. Boston and Toronto there in the NHL. And like we told you, the NFL will take center stage 24 hours from now. The king of all kings uh, will be front and center tomorrow. And so will our good friend Colby Dant, who just returned from overseas simply so he could go to the NFL draft and cash a few tickets here. So, Colby... Uh, always a pleasure to see you, my man. Uh, welcome back. I know she's got the, the tan going, uh, a little fun in the sun, and now you're ready to cash some tickets here with the NFL draft. How much do you believe of what you hear up to the draft? Because I've always found that believe absolutely nothing anybody tells you when it comes leaking out of organizations. Yeah, 100%. Especially as the years have gone on and there's been a bigger microscope (laughs) under the sport, I just feel like you can Mm -hmm. take nothing, you know, for granted here uh, on the information that's leaking. And, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I appreciate the tan comment. This is the Irish tan, by the way. And uh, look, Costa Rica or Detroit? Which one do you prefer? I think I I I go Detroit. Let's go. (laughs) Uh, you know what it is? It's a very strong lamp in front of you. That's what happens, man. It goes <laughs> when you don't hit the sun that much. That lamp can uh, can get your burn going there. Uh, all right, let me ask you this because I can't remember a draft with this many quarterback prospects and this much talk revolving around all quarterbacks. And I get it. Um, you know, you can't keep picking up the phone in November and calling the Joe Flacco's of the world before we have a problem in the NFL. So my only question to you is, I think there's going to be absolute chaos tomorrow night because I do believe there are going to be teams that are going to be trading, doing whatever they got to do. I think once the quarterback run begins, it's going because what choice does a team have who needs a court? You're not going next year's draft. Like what choice do you have? If you think any of these guys can play, then go get them, right? I mean, what else, what choice do you have as an organization these days? Oh, 100%. There's like a pandemic. I mean, you've seen it with – now, I guess the pushback well, would be we see Brock Purdy in the seventh round go to, uh, you know, have have great success early in his career. But, no, I'm with you. I think, you know, uh, there's been an issue in, in the NFL over the past couple of years where the, the QB play has been pretty lackluster. 
So if this is that all time class or the 83 class 2.0, um, then I, I do think teams will make their move. I, 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 I'm with you. I think this logic will make sense. You know, there's even if, even if you, you know, you, if, if your team's on the fence, I think the fact that you bring in a new quarterback, it just brings in fan interest. So I, I, I think teams oh, are yeah. still more reluctant. Brock Purdy could win Super Bowls. Brady could come back again, win more Super Bowls. They're still not going to be excited about taking a quarterback in the sixth and seventh round because that fan interest, you know, it's business 101 there. Uh, so I do think yep. that, that this will be a lot of quarterbacks going much higher projected than per- perhaps some think. So uh, what is your feeling about McCarthy? Uh, because, I, you know, we've – everyone thinks Caleb Williams, and I think I think of him the least in this draft because I think he's the biggest bust waiting to happen. So good luck there, Chicago. Uh, but where do we go after him? Uh, Daniels, everyone seems to think, is the next in line or maybe even should be uh, considered the best here. You got McCarthy. You got the Bo Nixon. So how do you rate these guys if you're looking at the draft? Give me one, two, and three here. Yeah, no, that's that's what I like. And I actually, there's a play out there for that, I think at plus 550 of, Ooh. you know, getting w- Williams one, Daniels two, McCarthy three. And I like the Pats to, to pick McCarthy. I know a lot of people think they're going to go Drake May. I think McCarthy is their guy. I think there's a lot of reasons why why they might choose that. One that jumps out is he's a Michigan guy. Oh, Tom Brady happens to be a Michigan guy. I know that's in a way stupid logic, but trust me, I think little things like that actually matter. Also, they they took Mac Jones recently. You know, we've seen Carolina quarterbacks. There's no real track record of Carolina quarterbacks succeeding mm. in the NFL. Uh, and I, I just think he's he's a guy that has climbed up the boards with great reason. You know, he's he's a guy that. Maybe his stat sheet doesn't light it up like like the others do, but you got to remember they were running, they're going out of the eye form, running a bunch. They were up by so many in their their week non con that they were that they were bringing in butt backup quarterbacks. So I mean, I I I just yep. think I think like the the Pats really have their eye on him, and I think the market even shows it. The market over the past you know week, I I think uh, has shown that uh, that that he's he's a candidate there a legit candidate. And I, I, I think he's actually got the better upside too. So what do we do? Because there were a couple of other household names uh, this year in college football. We saw Penix Jr. Uh, they have been questioning his ability to translate into the NFL game for as long as when he was at Indiana. Uh, <laughs> and now we all, Bo Nix, who's about 35, I feel like, because he played 19 years uh, in college football. So, uh, what about these guys here? First rounders, uh, does uh, does a team draft them if they're available? Yes, and I and I think I I, I believe Penix is definitely going to go in the first round. I think he actually is going to go way ahead of where he's projected. Well, I I guess it depends on what projection you're looking at. But Penix, I, I think, will, will, is rising up the board. Uh, I I wouldn't be surprised if a team traded up, and to, like you alluded to, to, to 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 grab Michael Penix. Now, Bo Nix is one that I, I still think he's going to go before, you know, what a lot of people project. I'm not as high on him personally, uh, just because I think that that Oregon offense, to me, I got to see a little bit more uh, from him. But Penix, I think, is ready. I think Penix will be good. But I, I do think all of them are going to go in the first. I think Nix will be a late first rounder, you know, and there's some value also on some of the teams, like getting, a, what, I think the Broncos, the Broncos to draft a quarterback mm-hmm. plus 175. That's an interesting one. Uh, I, I, like you said, certain teams, I think will make their moves for, for a quarterback. Uh, so look for the value on just the, just that draft prop right there. Team specific. I mean, there's a couple others I like too off the board. Like the, I'd like the dolphins to draft the mm-hmm. defensive lineman. And I know they brought in a bunch, but I think uh plus 200, the dolphins getting a, uh, a defensive lineman is a pretty decent bet there. And, uh, as a jets fan, I, I kind of think. Ooh they'll find a way to botch this and probably draft a tight end at plus 180. So oh. I know you're a Jets guy too, of course. right? Yeah. And this yeah, just makes exactly perfect sense, correct. right? We, we were... need offensive line. Brock Bowers drops to us. Yep. Oh, let's draft him. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I had said uh, I would be ecstatic if all they did was draft offensive linemen the entire draft. The entire draft, just give me OL and we are good to go and just protect Aaron Rodgers. Otherwise, the season blows up anyway here uh but it's it's interesting because there are some teams that absolutely 
need some quarterbacks, need uh, they need somebody. And don't forget, Will Levis, didn't the Titans move up to draft him? So why wouldn't you go get a Bo, a Bo Nix or a Penix Jr.? And I, I do think that's where the craziness uh, comes in. Are there any running backs going in the first round? Always seems to be a big question each year here. Is there what is that position even relevant this uh, this draft class? Ah, man, that's that's one that's interesting. I personally think this year, no, but no, right? I don't think there's any. It's not like last year where Bijan just jumped out. I I think you look at it, or, or even Jameer Gibbs jump, kind of jumped out. Gibbs, right? He was versatile. Yeah. But I, I, you look at this draft, and like I would be a bit surprised if, if a running back went in the first round because I, no one has stood out to me that much at covering college, uh, no, nope. to be worthy of a first round draft pick. Now you start talking second round, sure, all right, but yes. first round, I'm going to say no. I, and if you could find that prop, I saw it, I saw it a couple days ago for no running back draft yeah. in the first round. Jump on that. Yeah, I I agree. I and I think because this year we've heard about nobody. Some are saying the kid from Washington, but I I'm kind of with you. Uh, not uh, not in the first round. I think there's some other spots for him. Uh, does the SEC get the most kids drafted again this year? Yes, and if you can find that prop, jump on that because it will still happen. It'll still hit. It it'll still absolutely every year. Rinse and repeat. Call me Dan. We appreciate you, my man. Should be a hell of a draft. Go Jets. They'll screw it up. We'll talk to you again soon, man. Get the best decisions returns after this. gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Game time had 35 yep. in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, we I were. admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will take a long series from the Oilers and the Kings. And ultimately, I think the the stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second-best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular pink size bed, a, 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 a posipedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, don't think. He ready to roll. The nominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. Uh, we got a lot happening here, Major League Baseball. Uh, the Miami Heat uh, right now, 16-15, uh, with about four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. A much more competitive game here thus far than what we got in game one. We also have no goals so far with the uh, Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple Leafs. I thought we'd get a little more scoring here early on, but not so much. And, of course, the guy that's going to lead the charge top of the hour for all these games, Scotty Wetzel, joining us here. 
on game time decisions and uh love it's got we got a little something for everybody here this week uh gotta love what we've seen thus far unless of course you're a sixers fan uh at which point you want to throw up uh and or an <laughs> islander fan now you really want to oh, yeah. throw up uh or laker tonight fan. <laughs> we've got or laker fan also through all games and all teams that could have won and didn't and now they find themselves in terrible holes here and i think the miami heat know that in this game here i, I was not running to the window to lay two touchdowns with the Celtics on a Heat team that has shown time and time again they can't be counted out. I don't care who's playing here, Scotty. How did you look at this one tonight? Yeah, you know, listen, uh, reading lines, Joe, can be a dangerous thing, right? We, we talk about yes. that. You know, you, you think you know what they're trying to tell you and everything. But, you know, just simple logic, right? Celtics a 15 and a half or so point favorite game one. They win by 20 in a game that they could have won by 30. They were leading by 34, I think it was, uh, 33, 34, 35 in the fourth quarter, right? So they easily cover the number and win easily. So what happens for game two? The line drops. Not a lot, you know, but it, it lowered to 14 and a half. It's like, why? They got annihilated in game one. They weren't even competitive, and, and now the line is going to drop. So it's kind of like they were begging you to take the Celtics. Being a Celtic fan over the years, Joe, I love Miami. Uh, you want to give me 14 and a half points? And yep. I was telling my guys on the podcast, I, I think they have a decent chance of winning outright. I, I really do. Uh, they're, they're competitive right now. They're, they're down two. You know, they were leading first quarter a little bit. They're down two. Um, I've seen a Celtic team do this too many times, Joe. They, they get so complacent so easily. I'd be very surprised if Miami didn't at least cover that big number. Yeah, I mean, like you said, Scotty, the game was never really in doubt unless you laid the points in the first game, at which point you're sweating it out with two minutes left and you're going, why yeah. am I doing this? That's Celtics basketball. That's exactly why you're doing it. So not a fun team to lay that many points with at all. Uh, the market hasn't really changed much on the late game tonight. Also here with New Orleans uh, taking on OKC, we saw seven, seven and a half. In game one, it got shot up. Scotty, you, you could have gotten nine, nine and a half before tip-off as all that money came in. Uh, they won barely, and they better figure out how to get a rebound or two tonight, or they're not winning this one. Yeah, at Balanchun is 20 rebounds. FanDuel is offering oh. you a prop 18 rebounds at nine to one. Woo. I mean, listen, if he got 20 in a loss, uh, you know, you got to figure he's going to come out with just as much vigor tonight, right? I like mm -hmm. New Orleans, Joe. You know, that they showed me a little something there. You know, we saw Miami get blown out in game one after they won an emotional, you know, play in game two to get into the postseason. Uh, New Orleans had a similar yep. game against Sacramento, right? You know, big game. They're all excited. And what they do? Instead of laying an egg, you know, they went toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with OKC. Really could have won, very easily won that game, one possession game all the way through for the for the most part, or at least to, towards the end. So this line to me is like a regular season line. And OKC, mm -hmm. I know best record in, uh, you know, in the Western Conference, but they have to show me that the regular season OKC – is also the postseason uh, OKC. I think New Orleans, much like Miami, I think they're live dogs, and I think they could win outright. I'd put a couple of shekels on the money line with New Orleans. Like I said, they showed me something there in game one and then uh, grabbing a seven and a half as well. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. I, uh, You know, styles make fight, and they're just not a very big team OKC, and it looked like New Orleans just went in and pushed them around the way they wanted to and give themselves a chance to win, so... Big game for New Orleans coming up here tonight. Big game for Dallas in the NHL here, Scotty. What uh, what do they got to do? First of all, it doesn't even look fair. Like, we haven't seen that Vegas team all year long. <laughs> yeah. And then the first game in the playoffs, they trot out Stone. And they're like, come on. Yeah, you got to be kidding me. Can, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, can, can they get one, though? Can Dallas get one here tonight? They better if they don't, Joe. Looked mm. it up. Spent it all day. Like, I read through every single series in the history of the NHL, right? No, I found it on some mm. website. Teams that lose the first two games of a playoff series in the NHL are 54 mm -hmm. and 340 for that series. So basically, oh. they win one out of every six times. Um and oddly so, enough, you know, the, the ratio for the teams that lose the first two at home is, is not, you know, it's about the same, mm -hmm. 21 and 85. So they got to win tonight, Joe. If, if they have any hopes of winning this series, they have to win. The old zigzag theory, give me, give me the stars. 
I'll bite you. Know, it. I, you don't have a choice. Uh, they don't have a choice here. And they outshot uh, Vegas, uh, you know, yeah. almost two to one, Scotty, and they still lost. So big game for them. Uh, Edmonton just looks like a freight train. I, I can't imagine sweating out an under in this series ever. Uh, what are you doing here tonight? Yeah, got to go over, right? It was five and a half this oh. morning, minus 140, I saw. And I was, I, you know, I knew that was not going to last long. Now it's six, six and a half, depending on uh, where you do your shopping, right? So Edmonton has beaten them so many times. For whatever reason, th- th- I will say, kind of like with OKC, th- this is a regular season line as far as the total goes because the games of the regular season were low scoring, but this is the postseason. Mm-hmm. You know, both these teams racked it up a little bit. Ed- Edmonton's got all that offense. Um, I, I'm going to go with Edmonton. I'm going to go with the over. I know it's a simplistic. It's kind of a PP, right? Public parley. Everyone's all over Edmonton. But, man, until the Kings show that they can match wits with, with uh, the Edmonton Oilers, I, I'm, I'm definitely going with Edmonton tonight. Man, I like the over again. Doug, are you leaning? Uh, who are you leaning uh, with Winnipeg and Colorado? Not it up one apiece. It feels like anybody can win that series. Yeah, really. I'm surprised. I, I didn't think Colorado would win. You know, four straight losses, Ooh. outmanned in all four games, and they win in Winnipeg uh, last night. I still think the Jets are going to prevail, though. I, I'll take Winnipeg plus odds. And you can get them at plus odds, which is kind of crazy, yeah. Scotty, because a lot of question marks in goal for Colorado, and I, that's not going to go away. So should be it's another series. I can't sweat out and under there. Scotty Wetzel, yeah. top of the hour. Have a great show. Enjoy the night. We'll close it out. Game time decisions next year on the grid. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Game time had 35 in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, I admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on SportsGrid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will take a long series from the Oilers and the Kings. And ultimately, I think the the stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a friend with pink side effect, a, 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 a possibility, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. Be ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in here as we close out this edition of Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. But have no fear. Scotty Wetzel and the crew in game live prime time coming up here at the top of the hour and they'll take over and get you all caught up with everything that's happening uh, tonight in the world of sports. And there is plenty going on right now, including a really good one there uh, in game two between Miami and Boston. The Celtics up 40 to 35, seven and a half minutes to go 
in this game here. But so far, uh, the story is uh, shooting. Uh, Miami, 9 of 18 from 3. Uh, just 5 of 14 for Boston, 35%. So there's the regression we were talking about. Miami knows what they got to do in order to be able to keep this game close with a chance to win. And they got to be good from three. And they have been very good from three, 50% already here early in this game. Uh, Jovic has got six. Heroes got six. Caleb Martin, three. So they're getting a little something for everyone. And Jaime Jaquez Jr. is the guy that's really elevated Miami so far. 11 points uh, in this one right now, while uh, Jason Tatum has 16 in this game already. That's right, 16 he has got so far. So Miami's going to have to figure something out uh, with him. We do have OKC in New Orleans coming up, 9.30 Eastern time tonight. That should be a good one and we do have some hockey underway through one no score but very chippy here between the bruins and the toronto maple leaves and that all important uh game three right now and this is going to be like that i think pretty much for the rest of the series here these two teams tend to spend more time in the penalty box than they should but so far, that didn't hurt either one of them early in this game right now. As you've got, uh, you got Marshawn and company, seven shots on goal apiece. Uh, so not too bad uh, so far. And they're pretty even. A couple of penalty kills by both teams. And uh, you've got nothing, nothing. So that game closed at six. In-game total going to be less than that right now so an opportunity still to jump into that game if you haven't done so already and of course we got plenty of major league baseball going on here tonight uh boy that escalated in a hurry here uh red sox tacked on a few more runs top of the seventh they're up six nothing and the brewers uh on top right now three two over the pirates here is the bullpen's are underway in that game. Phillies on top, 2-1 over the Reds. Dodgers, gee, just when you thought they were going to run away with it, it's 4-2 as the Nats have gotten themselves back into it. Uh, the Rays on top of the Tigers, 4-1 right now. That is in the bottom of the fourth. And will you believe it? The Yankees figured out how to score a couple of runs. 2-0 uh, right now over the Athletics you got the Braves on top of the Marlins, 2-1. And get a load. Stop me if you've heard this before. The White Sox uh, have no runs. Good news is neither do the Twins here as they are early in the second inning in that one. Royals out on top of the Blue Jays, 1-0. And the Cubs on top of the Astros, 1-0 in that one there. Again, the storyline will be... Uh, the Cubs got everyone. Suzuki, Bellinger on the IL now. The Astros can't hit anything. Uh, the wind, double digits, blowing dead in from center field here tonight. Jamison Tyon on the mound for the Cubs. And the Astros just don't have any healthy pitchers left. Uh, so we'll see. Make it a 4 nothing game right now in the bottom of the first as uh, it looks like. Well, they figured out how to be able to uh, to score some runs early in this game by keeping the ball on the ground. And that's exactly what they have done. So a quick 4-0 lead here for the, Bre uh, for the Cubs, rather. Brewers still on top in their game. So much going on here. We got another NHL game, uh, two NHL games, in fact, coming up between Dallas and Vegas. Get ready for that. Uh, and Miami just will not go away in this one. 42-40 right now. Celtics on top. Five and a half minutes to go here in the first half. And already we're starting to see much more from this Miami Heat team that we did in game one. So it should be a fun night here tonight across the diamond, the ice, and the hardwood. And don't go anywhere because in-game live prime time is coming up. Sheriff Penn, Scotty Wetzel, they'll take over and get you up to date with everything you need to know to make it a profitable evening. Game time decisions will be back tomorrow. Enjoy your night. We'll talk to you again soon.